come in. He's he reared up with him, and he he actually told me he flipped over with him four times. Holy smokes! And so did he kind of say, "I'm done with him"? Or what did what was he his basically said advice he's a dangerous or recognition? Horse. Don't get on him. Um, and I'm like, well, what do I do with him? Cause hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video, it's gonna be part two of me working with a horse that is known for flipping over. So if you haven't seen part one, make sure you go back and watch part one first. Let's jump into the second video. He is, sure is nice and soft on the ground, isn't he? It is interesting though, his first response when he feels pressure is to freeze up a bit. Another very subtle lick and chew. Hey, if you guys are enjoying these videos and you would like to see more content and be able to ask me questions about your horse as well as video coaching, think about joining my Patreon page. $10 a month, it's a great value. You'll be glad you did. We do monthly giveaways. It's a lot of fun. I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. So you've mostly ridden him on the trail, not ridden the arena much? Not ridden much, probably twice. Yeah, that's not very much. Oh, that's really big. That blowout noise for a horse that's as introverted as he is is a, a very good sign. That means he's relaxing through his rib cage. By me moving his feet a little more now and having his rib cage relax enough, that's what kind of allowed that to happen. He, you know, he needed to breathe a little deeper. Just like a person who's stressed, if they go for a run and they need to breathe a little bit more, they're gonna be a little more relaxed when they get back, you know because it helps your body process stress hormones and breathing is really good for everything. Got a nice soft canter. He's a nice horse. Yeah, I mean, he's really pleasant. It'll be uh, I mean, great if we can get this. Rearing situation figured out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add in one more, um, one more, I'm gonna teach him to lower his head two more ways. Okay. Um, Cause again, I think that's really the only thing we found that that is that has any significance really. So. hard but I am trying to make it uncomfortable and then I felt him push down a little bit stronger into my hand and let it go and when I do this I'm gonna do it very very slowly I want it's important he's he's very introverted but he's paying attention to everything 
And it's very important that he knows what's coming. So like even me reaching for my hand there and him you know, reaching for his, the, halt, the rope there. So, so watch how I do this. I'm just gonna lift, I'm gonna reach for it, I'm gonna drop it, but I'm gonna, when I get a hold of it, I'm gonna lift it very slowly. I don't know if you saw this subtle mm -hmm. little head movement. For again, for an introverted horse, I'm gonna let him uh, tell me every time when the release is, because that's why we're doing this. You could easily get, um, you could get get to where you're thinking, seeing the head on the ground. That's that's what lets me know. Okay, we're real good. No, it's getting him to think about what I'm asking him for. That's what makes us safe. That's what's gonna make a safe horse to ride. Okay. Is a horse that's very, very accepting and very. Um, comfortable with whatever the human's asking for you know it's not it's not fun to see a horse doing high level movements or you know being very obedient but seeing them very troubled mentally you know what i'm talking about you know where you, but if you see a horse it doesn't have to do anything super crazy fancy for it to look really nice if that horse looks comfortable that's that's kind of what we're going for Drop it like it's hot. He, I gave him a micro release there. He th thought about tipping his nose, but I'm gonna sign him up a little more this time. He looks away. That tells me it's time to go again because he's not thinking about this. So I got there a little quicker that time. But remember, he wants to have his head up. So me and I'm not I'm not instead of me not making it go down, I'm trying to make it go up. So you have to Now his eyes are starting to close. There's the lick and chew. He's getting softer. Know what the most recent headgear the trainer was riding him in? Not the most recent, no. I know he tried a bozel and he tried a bitless bridle, but I don't know what bits yeah. he tried. Because what, what I'm wondering is if there's a chance that he has connected, like the reason he was trying different things is if a horse has connected a certain bit to, or or bosal or something to flipping over, well then you wouldn't wanna, you could avoid doing that, that right. would be nice, you know. So I'm what I'm trying to decide in my head, if I was to step on him, would I wanna step on him with a rope halter on, or would I wanna step on him with a snaffle bit on? Those would be one of my choices. I rode him in a snaffle bit. A little lower <laughs> slowly but surely I'm getting a little more sure about it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard for him. This is this is the this is the yield that's challenging for him to Oh, did you see that? That was good. See, I just I just went to lift it. Watch. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's very smart. Super smart. Inch by inch. All right, a 
always had a lump of there. But I like how soft his lip is. Mm -hmm. His eyes, his ears, head, neck. That's looking comfortable. standards of standing still and bridling saddling you know it's like not, not so well so I, I really get understand what you were saying about he's so pleasant to be around on the ground he is <laughs> if he just wouldn't flip over <laughs> just a minor just a minor, minor thing. detail that, that would be nice no biggie. no biggie so i want to play with him off the snapple here just a little bit and uh test test a few yields there because you did mention when you were telling me about him i don't know if it was on the camera or off camera uh, but that the trainer or, or yourself felt like you lost the flexion when he got bothered yeah, yeah, the, the and so did. so that will definitely be a key element to, for the rider safety is to be able to bend him when they want to um, most of the time i would say when a horse flips over it was a little bit more rider caused by pulling on him with two reins to control them um, things I try to do with any horse when I put a feel on is I try to just hold and wait for them to give to it versus just taking it pulling and those are all the little things that kind of builds trust with a horse where they they trust our hands because it, it's easy to get a horse defensive in their mouth by pulling and it's it's a natural response for humans mm -hmm. to pull mm -hmm. <laughs> instead yeah. of put a put a feel on there and hold and wait for the horse to give to it The other thing that's interesting is if he's feeling claustrophobic that he can go forward where he would flip over, bending him is not what's really needed, it's forward. <laughs> forward is what's needed. Because okay. if he's already feeling like he can't go forward, that's a feeling of being claustrophobic, okay? okay. Th that's the same feeling that a horse wouldn't want to go into a trailer, same feeling if a horse is tied up and pulled back. You could categorize it and say, in the, it's it's in the claustrophobic. How did they feel? Claustrophobic. That's what triggered that reaction, that response. Um, and so we don't want him to feel claustrophobic when we bend him. So we actually would want to be careful about not bending him too much okay. um, when he got bothered. It would be more about getting him to relax and go forward okay. um, as a release. The other interesting thing that I learn over and over and over throughout my career is that control makes us feel better, but it makes the horse feel more worried. <laughs> but the more um, you know, control we have, the better we feel, the less they feel. But vice versa, the more freedom they have, the better they feel. So it's a balance, right? We right. gotta teach them that we can control them so that we feel okay, but we also have a responsibility to help them feel okay too. And it's, it basically boils down to the idea, do you want a partner or you want a slave? Right. You know, is it just, you work for me, I said do it, or is it, I'm gonna present it to you with this idea, could we do this together? And he feels to me like a horse that uh, very much needs that kind of attitude uh, towards him, because I, I, he's introverted and I could just see how he could get stuck pretty easy um, if he felt like it was, it was being forced. Was he pretty easy to get going on rides? Oh yeah, he's forward. <laughs> okay, <laughs> interesting. I like that he doesn't feel afraid of me or afraid of anything. And I would say that most of the time, if, if, I, if somebody brought me a horse and they said, it was just out of trainers, <laughs> they came to me, I would say that's a pretty common thing that the horse feels a bit afraid because it's easy to, put too much pressure on them and try to make them do what you want as a trainer um, and so I'm, I'm impressed that he feels very comfortable with everything see he is locked up right now 
I got a hold of him and he gave and I released a few times and then I decided to hold it and now he's going I'm bound up and I'm waiting I'm wanting those those feet to turn loose right there so that's also a hold okay. if, if he's a nine-year-old horse and you put a feel on both reins and it doesn't equal the feet connection to the feet moving that's all to me that's a hold um, it's for me it's a hold if you pull on one rein and the horse just goes like this and if, if the rider had their life up and was like let's go and you pull a rein and there's no feet moving you don't want a horse to learn to tip their head here and run this way, right. you know. Uh, but vice versa, you don't want a horse to be stuck and not not heel backwards either. And so we want them to be in their correct position with some flexion and you know tucking, you know lifting up their belly and rounding their back. But we also need the mental connection of when I put a feel with both reins, I want a connection to the feet. That's what I have now. You see that? Mm -hmm. So I put a feel, he backs up. Or a second ago, you're like, oh, I'm stuck. And in those moments when he's stuck, that's when you don't want to keep pressing buttons if you're sitting on it right. and, and, and trigger a, a larger response. So now I'm using the stirrup as like a leg cue and my rein to ask him to step forward. And this is what I would do with a colt that I felt like was wanting to get locked up before I stepped on him. Mm -hmm. You know, if I, had a, if I had a colt that couldn't stand still, I wouldn't do this. I would get on and carry, carry on with it as long as I felt like they were comfortable with me. But if they're locked up, you want to have a couple of different connections in their brain that says the answer is forward. So I'm clucking, tapping it with the stirrup, putting a feel with the rein, and then releasing him to forward. Okay. So the answer to that strange question was forward. Which is interesting because you've told me now that he goes forward easily when you ride him. And I like that one. He went forward. He didn't move sideways. The other two, he moved, but he didn't move forward. And so the, it's, it is important that it's a forward thought, not a lateral thought. So all these little, all these little details with a horse that is as sensitive as he is that adds up. Even that, the very first step forward. It seems simple, but it's important because it tells you his brain, him and I are on the same page because that's what I asked for was forward. So it's almost like I'm doing like a simulated ride right now. I'm back here in a different position. And then he got forward, that was great. There, that was the horse that you said like to go because he's feeling some pressure there. in your pocket now another thought that I'd like him to have is stretching down off of one rein so the same thing that I did with the, the halter opposite of up think down so if he starts to get troubled the idea would be that I would ask him to think down but now he's thinking laterally can you see that mm -hmm. So even though it's a good thing that he's doing right there, that's not what I asked. I asked for down. That time his ears got closer to the ground. So then I released it.
down to the chest. Make sure putting your foot in the stirrup. How hard is it to get the head down? A little bit, but the head isn't too high. When, when you were sitting on him and he thought about flipping over, what was the kind of signs that you had? Did he start backing up? Did he start lifting his head higher? Well, he would get real antsy and like moving his feet. And then if you tried to like hold him back still, he just did something with his head. And when he did that with his head, I knew we were getting ready to wear. So he was pretty troubled before that. Yeah. He was troubled when another horse was leaving him. Yeah. I see. Or if he wanted to go and you wanted to stand. I see. So, again, I feel like there's some irony here because I'm about to ask him to put his head up. <laughs> it's like, I don't want his head up, but it's funny because this is the, the psychology that works best with horses is reverse psychology. So we don't want him to flip over, and here I am pulling his head up <laughs> in order to teach him that that means put it down. So. But we got him, you see he's pretty calm, pretty mm -hmm. relaxed. I don't feel, I, when I do this, I go by what my gut tells me, because I get on dangerous horses for a living <laughs> all the time, and if I just did it happenstance and I didn't have any rhyme or reason to it, and not that I couldn't be wrong ever, you know, it could happen. Um, but I go by what my gut's telling me and I don't feel anything from him that's telling me I shouldn't be sitting up here. So if I did, I wouldn't do it. I'm not trying to, I really try to check my ego at the gate and not, not bring like I need to impress you or impress the audience who's watching or something like that. It's just like kind of past everything I did. And, and uh, so this is making me think it's more about building the connection like we talked about with, in those other areas. So I think those situations were probably a lot of pressure for him. And I don't think he wanted to do that, but I think he felt that troubled about it. Okay. So I think it's more about getting him to learn to read the person's energy versus, or sorry, le learn to read their intention versus the energy. So energy is what are the other horses are doing, what the helicopter landing next door is doing, right. what the dogs are doing. None of that has to affect the way my horse behaves. My horse should be, it should be me and my herd you know, us two here, and that's what should matter, you know. Um, oh, I like that one. So again, right now, I'm just continuing what I was doing on the ground, but I'm just building in, you know, re kind of releasing him to being rode, and the idea would be asking him to do easier things under saddle than what I did on the ground, so that he gets even more comfortable with a rider up there. And that would be the foundation that I would try to build from. Okay. Because if he gets troubled, they're like, something's going to trouble him at some point. You got to have a plan B. What, right. what do we do? Do we, do we bail off? Or are there some default patterns that we can go to that help him feel comfortable again? Okay. So if he can get to be a thousand percent sure that when the rider picks up on this rain, when he drops his head, everything is going to stop. We're not going to keep asking him to do whatever we were just asking him to do. But if he can't stand still and he's running around, we might need a different type of plan B. Okay. And for me, I bend their head to the side and I ask them to move their hindquarters around. And that's my, that's my plan B. So this side, he got a little more bothered by that. Well, I think his legs cocked in yeah, there. Yeah, it was. So obviously if he was gonna rear up, he'd have to have that engaged. And then, you know, riding him in the round pen here instead of riding him in an arena or out on the trail until he gets comfortable. I'm being mindful to keep the toes of my boots in the, in the stirrups in case I do got to have an exit strategy. <laughs> I mean, an emergency dismount. The other day I had somebody try to tell me how they were bucked off, but they didn't say they got bucked off. They said they had an emergency dismount. I'm like, I think I know where you're going with that. I've emergency dismounted many a time myself.
So I would teach them that at a standstill, and then I would teach them that in motion, where while we're riding around here, I would just put a feel on this rein and hold and wait for the lower's head. Now, as he gets more comfortable and as he finds relief with his head down more and more, which again is the opposite of what he wants to do. He, he innate, innately, in his, regardless of training, innately he's up here, which means he's alert, which is one step before being panicked or threatened. When he gets to panic or threatened, that's when he thinks about flipping over. Okay. okay. So the goal is to retreat on this side of alert and not let him keep going to being alert. Horses are generally concerned when they're in a training situation. Below concerned is curious, which is great, or automatic in behavior, which is when you're sleeping, eating, all that stuff. Uh, that's a quote from evidence-based horsemanship, right? The book that Mark Black and a veterinarian wrote together. And so, um, I would I would ride him in here and do a bunch of stuff in here until this got to be an easy default pattern. That I had a couple of go-to patterns that if I felt like we got into a bind, we could do that or we could step off before he would feel like he needs to go that, that far along. But I, I luckily think he didn't really connect it to riding. I think he connected it to just the situations that were coming up. Okay. Um, which I think were generally caused by a human. <laughs> you know what I mean? Meaning, I don't think he wants to go there. I think there's ways to talk him off the ledge. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's what I'm getting at. I don't feel from him that he's saying, nope, that's it. It's this way or th that's it. Because if I did, I would be like, this might not be worth anybody's help getting into. I would tell you that if I thought it. Right. But, uh, but that also doesn't mean that he's a safe horse for anybody to ride because it would take a very skilled person to work through that. Yeah. Right. And so, um, you know, I think it, it makes it makes a lot of sense to have Jake put some time into him and um, let Jake just let you know what he thinks, you know, going forward with it um, before you call it call it quits with him, okay. you know, before you decide there's no there's no other option. But again, a horse that has already kind of had that behavior, you, you can't just. You, it's not like oh Jake's gonna put a month on him and then you're gonna sell him to a beginner to go trail riding no, 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 like no. that. It just that's not how it would work either, um, because you would take a person who's experienced and who knows him well enough to go through these same condition, these same training techniques mm -hmm. um, that we would work, we'll teach him. So, so that that's all the stuff you gotta gotta consider. So I like that he's wanting to stand still. And I think that I think by the time he has roller skates and is moving his feet around, I think he's pretty bothered. Okay. Because when, the whole time he's been in here, I've had the majority of the time him wanting to stand still and not wanting to move. And I've only had a little bit of him. See, I'm like having to talk him into going here. I've only had a little bit of him wanting to move around more than I wanted for. But that right there, I think, is a great test. If I can put a little light feel and he'll give right there, that tells me he's mentally with me. We're together right now. When you pick up on that rein and, and you feel dead weight on the other end of it, that's when it's not no, no bueno. Because that means he's on a different planet and you're on a different planet. Okay. like maybe I trot him around the rail for a minute and then I bring him into the center and create a pattern of okay now we're gonna come into the center and get relief with your head you know and I would just teach him this in lots of ways so I don't have time to do all that today you know this very right I've started the the idea of it but that's that would be the approach that I would take moving forward and I feel like it's pretty doable it I, I, I think unfortunately this was a, a little bit man, of a man-made situation you know where um he was feeling more bothered, and I think it. Was, I also believe it was easily. It was. It could. Ha it could happen easily because I think he's very introverted, and he's kind of hard to read, and because he's so introverted, and I have a lot of experience doing this, and so it's not hard for me to read this. But if you didn't have that, you know, thousands of problem horses under your belt, it would be a little tricky to to work through. So I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying I think. You could think he's okay because he's giving enough positive behaviors that you would go, oh, everything's kind of okay, but it's not, when it's not okay. And then it, we didn't really realize it wasn't okay until we got to the, the point of rearing. Well, my main question was, did you think he's 
if we can get this out of him, and it sounds like you think he has a little bit of hope. I don't think it's getting it out of him. I think it's a workaround. Okay. It's always there. Okay. It's, it's already happened. You can't press delete. Okay. <laughs> you, there is no file delete. Right. You know, that would be That would be nice if there was. So that's always in there. And it's in every horse, but different, you know, one horse, when they feel really bothered, they're going to run away. Another horse, they feel really bothered, they're going to blow up and fuck. Yeah. Another horse, they're going to really bothered, they're going to do nothing, and they're going to wear it. Those are the kids' horses of the world, the husband yeah. horses, right? And then there's the horses that will rear and flip over, and they're, they're thinking up, you know. Okay. Um, and so he's that, he's that horse, which is very dangerous for our health. Right. Um, and so, but I think... Because he's so introverted, it's easy, it's easy to miss how troubled he really is until it's too late. Um, and that's why it's, it's really important to have a very skilled professional continue working with him mm -hmm. um, and hopefully build some good default patterns that then you could take home with you and go, okay, if, if you're on a trail ride and he starts getting troubled, first try this, then try that. You know, okay. what, and, and those would have to get be discovered and developed um, through those training, training months. So, yeah. So it's interesting that he feels comfortable enough to tell me he doesn't really want to move out. Yet. Yeah. You're right. I would, that's how I would interpret it. You know, I think when he's moving out that much, he's actually already pushing through thresholds. Okay. Have you ever seen a horse go up to like a creek or a ditch or something, and they're like, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, and then they go. Yeah. Right. That's a little bit what's happening. Instead of him stepping over the creek and walking down the trail comfortably. He's jumping over the creek, so to speak, and he's marching down the trail with a little bit too much going on. Okay. So he's comfortable in his environment. He was pretty comfortable in here. He's not super comfortable with pressure. Okay. Pressure is the flag working, me looking at him and asking him for things, pulling on a rein, or okay. that's pressure. He's got to, That's what he's got to get more comfortable with. There's some miscommunication between him and him and the, the rider with as far as pressure goes, because pressure is how we communicate with him our legs, the rain, even with how much, I'm starting to get uncomfortable with how much leg I got to use to get him to go because it's, I'm using quite a bit to get him to move. And which means he's not feeling comfortable to move freely forward, okay. right? So that means we got to get him to turn loose in more ways there. Okay. So, so that, it, it, for me, it's a great quality. If you could have a horse that gives the pressure a little really well and is scared of everything in the environment. Okay. So it's like every horse is a snowflake, right? They're all, they look similar, but they're all different. Right. And uh, that's, you, you've understood his makeup, you know? So that sounds like the, there is the makings of a good trail horse in there. He just has to get some, some clearer on the communication between the rider and him. Okay. All right, so I'm back here with Vicki, and I just wanted to get your impression, your reaction to what, what we learned about him. What, what was your first impression about what I was sharing as far as horsemanship-wise? I mean, I was very impressed. Um, I liked the way you worked with him and how he responded. I mean, he's very, very calm in, in everything you've done, and you took the time that he needs, and I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. I, I, I feel like there's hope for him. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you could value that because some people value how fast something happens and that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's how fast can they get it done and how fast did you get them saddled and rode and that, that's all that they cared about. You know, I'm glad that you could see the thought and horsemanship that we were trying to put into him. What's your thoughts on, you know, the kind of hope for him and moving, moving forward? How do you feel about it? I, I'm, I'm hopeful now. I was not hopeful before I got here because of what I've been told about him and what I've experienced. Um, but now you've, you've, You've zoned in on his, what his issues are. He's very introverted, which I thought he was an extrovert mm. because of the way he acted. Um, you know, you enlightened me. <laughs> All right, very cool. And it's also exciting that you're, I'm excited that you're willing to put effort into him. There's a lot of people out there that are pretty willing to ship a horse down the road if they're not cooperating for far less than what he's done. And horses are just a big responsibility. And that's that's how I was raised. You don't just kick them to the curb and say, get another one. You, you figure it out and you work through, through the challenges. I'm not, that doesn't mean, you know, get on them and do something that's not safe for you. And so what she's going to be looking at doing is putting him in training um, with my buddy, Jake, whose ranch I'm at, Pear Tree Ranch. Um, so I'm going to put a link to his YouTube channel. He's got one going as well um, in the description. And um, hopefully Jake will keep us posted on how things are going with him and we'll be able to follow Cisco and Vicky's journey down the road. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Thank All right. you. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.